If we could have the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance yes. to the flag, to the flag right. of the United States, States of America, of America. And, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, and one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for, all. for all. Okay, Barb, can we have the roll call, please? Bellinger. Uh, Bellinger here, Ingham County, City of Williamston. Weiss. Here. Weiss, you have to now state your city and state. For oh, uh, Weiss, Williamson, Michigan, Ingham County. Rhines. Rhines, Williamston, Michigan, Ingham County. Gilroy. Here, Ingham County, City of Williamston. Smith. Here. Uh, Ingham County, City of Williamston, State of Michigan. Pratt. Present, Ingham County, City of Williamston, Michigan. All right, next we have approval of agenda. Do we have any changes or additions to the agenda at this time? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as submitted if no changes are made. Bellinger will second. Motion by Gilroy, second by Bellinger to approve the agenda as presented. Can we get a roll call vote, please? Pratt. Yes. Bellinger. Yes. Weiss. Yes. Rhines. Yes. Gilroy. Yes. Smith. Yes. Okay, next we have audience participation, maximum five minutes per presentation. Do we have any audience at this time? And I see we do not, so we will move on. Uh, next we have the election of mayor and mayor pro tem. Do we have any nominations for mayor? Motion to nominate Tammy Gilroy to another term as mayor, Smith. We have a second. Second, Rhines. Okay, any discussion? Or we will get a roll call on that, please, Barb. Bellinger. Yes. Weiss. Yes. Rhines. Yes. Gilroy. Yes. Smith. Yes. Pratt. Yes. And I will turn it over to Mayor Gilroy at this point. All right, thank you, Holly. Thank you, everyone. And now I'm looking for a nomination for Mayor Pro Tem. I'll throw my head in if somebody. Motion to nominate Noah Bellinger to Mayor Pro Tem. Smith. Second, Weiss. Thank you. Barb, can I have the roll, please? Weiss. Yes. Rhines. Yes. Gilroy. Yes. Smith. Yes. Pratt. Yes. Bellinger. Yes. All right. Thank you, everyone. Now I'm looking for approval for council meeting minutes of November 23rd, 2020. If there are no changes, I'm looking for a motion to move that forward. So moved, Wise. Thank you. Supported, Bellinger. Thank you very much. Barb, will you call the roll for the council meeting minutes of November 23rd, 2020? Bellinger. Yes. Weiss. Yes. Rhines. Yes. Gilroy. Yes. Pratt. Yes. Smith. Yes. All right. Uh, Noah, did you have the opportunity to go over accounts payable? Uh, yes, I did. And I do have to apologize to Mr. Pratt because I didn't have his email to send uh, additional information for questions. So I apologize, uh, Tom. But I did have a chance to approve them all. I did have a chance to meet with Corey. Uh, so I'd like to make, uh, make a motion to approve ACH 53 through 58 and also approve checks 73821 dated 1120 through check 73886 dated 12 
four of 2020 and a total amount of one hundred and thirty two thousand six hundred and seventy four dollars and eighty cents. And the floor is open to ask any questions uh, to Corey and the team if they have any additional information. I found them pretty straightforward. I did raise the question on the uh, $15,000 for the cemetery, and that's just a standard uh, annual fee that we pay. Floor is yours, Mayor. Thank you, Noah. Did anybody have any questions uh, regarding accounts payable for Corey or Rachel or? I'll second Smith. Okay, all right, thank you very much. If there's no further discussion on accounts payable, Barb, will you call the roll, please? Please. Yes. Rains. Yes. Gilroy. Yes. Smith. Yes. Pratt. Yes. Bellinger. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. And now we have on our uh, agenda the 2019-2020 audit presentation. We have Christina here this evening. So I will go ahead and turn it right over to you, Christina. All right. Thank you. Um, I do see you on the full agenda, so I'll try to move it along pretty quickly. <laughs> if you know, um, I want to give your staff a lot of credit on top of navigating a ever-changing work environment. They encountered a very different audit experience this year. Uh, we had to perform the audit remotely, and the staff of the city did a really great job pulling everything for us and getting that information over to us. Um, so we want to say thank you for that. I hope that everybody received a copy of the board packet. Just to reiterate, again, the board packet are just selected pages out of the full audit report that uh, we pull out and highlight some areas just to bring to your attention so that we can focus our discussion on some of the more important items. If you have any questions as we go through it, just let me know. Um, again, I, I wanna just go through here pretty quickly. This first page is just the first page of the audit report. The next page is the first of two letters that we include in the financial statement information for the city. I've highlighted some of the key wording. Most important is toward the bottom of this first page under the opinions paragraph. Uh, that paragraph states that uh, the above financial statements were presented fairly in all material respects. That's an unqualified opinion. That's the kind of wording you wanna have. And then on the next page, we talk about the second letter that we issued with the financial statements. We'll cover that in just a little bit. The next page is actually page three of the financial statements. I've mixed up the order of the pages from what you'll find in the actual full audit report, just to try to give you a better understanding of the flow of information. Page three is the balance sheet for all of the governmental funds. This is on a modified accrual basis or a short-term basis. None of the long-term activity is included in, in this information yet. So it would be my assumption that this is, the, this is the way that you would typically receive the information as a board through the fund financial statement information. So I wanted to cover this part first. The balance sheet uh, lists all of the assets that are owned, all the liabilities that are owed to others, and then the difference is the fund balance. So we have to list all the major funds separately. Of course, we've got the general fund, major street and local fund. And then all of the non-major funds get consolidated, put together, and called in this non-major governmental funds. At this point, there's only one, the 2003 Act 342 bonded debt, because the Act 175 bond debt was paid off last year, so that only left the one fund in there. Uh, for the general fund, if you look down towards fund balances, you'll see that there is a unassigned fund balance of about $1.4 million. That's approximately 75% of annual expenditures. That's that's FT fund balance. So wanted to point that out to you. You go down to the next page. This is a statement of revenues, expenditures, changes in fund balance. It's the income statement for all of those major funds and then a summary for the non-major. Uh, go down toward the bottom. The general fund added to the net position or fund balance by 73,000. The major fund also added at a smaller amount. The local street uh, took away from the fund balance a little bit. And the non-major governmental funds, of course, there's no fund balance activity there. Just uh, activity that comes in and then goes back out. The next page is the statement of net position for the proprietary funds. Proprietary funds are funds that are run more like a business. That's your sewer and water fund, plus the internal service fund. 
Uh, this is the balance sheet, if you will, or the statement of net position for that, listing the assets, deferred outflows of resources, liabilities, deferred inflows, and then the net position at the bottom. So you see the sewer fund has a net position right now of 7.3 million. Water fund has a net position of nearly 3 million. Internal service fund has 546,000. If you go to the next page, you'll see the uh, all of the revenues, all of the operating expenses by categories. The change in net position toward the middle there, again, we're on page eight of the financial statements. You'll see that the sewer fund actually all of the funds added to the net position for the activity for fiscal year 2020. <clears throat> Proprietary funds are on a full accrual basis, much like a, a business, because these are, these are funds that are run like a business. We take all of that information and we roll it up to the next page, which is actually page one of the financial statements. The governmental activities is all of the uh, governmental funds we talked about. The business type activities are the water and sewer fund. And we, for the governmental activities, we take all of that fund information, we add the long-term stuff, which is the non-current assets, the deferred outflows of resources, deferred inflows, and all the debt that's related. So this, this is a snapshot is of what position the city would be in if they were run like a business and had all of the assets and all of the liabilities in one page. At the bottom there, you'll see the total net position for the governmental activities is 5.5. Nine million. This meeting is being recorded. And again, the business type activities total net position is over 10 million. And then the next page is the statement of activities. This is kind of the income statement for uh, the long term aspect of the city. I've highlighted the change in net position there. The governmental activities added to the net position nearly 300,000. Business type activities added to 203,000. The component units added 243,000. So then I wanted to show the next page here is a caption from the notes to the financial statements showing capital asset activity. We've got that broken down between governmental activities, business type activities, and then the component units. And the governmental activities, which is page 22 out of the financial statements. Under the increases, you'll see that there was some infrastructure that was added, some road work. Land improvements was an improvement to the park. And then the office equipment, I believe there was a server that was installed. Mm -hmm. But under the business type activities, as well as on the next page, component units, there were no additional capital assets that were added. The next page is page 26. This is the long-term debt activity for the year for governmental activities. Under the additions column, the only thing that was added for long-term debt was uh, additions to compensated absences because as, as the employees earn their time throughout the year, they're also earning those compensated absences. Plus, they also take those compensated absences. Uh, there was no uh, long-term debt other than compensated absences that had an increase. All of the other items were, were continued to be paid off. So I just wanted to show that to you. The next page is a list of upcoming accounting pronouncements that uh, will have an uh, impact on the financial statements for the city of Williamson. Just something to bring to your attention. And we can, we can have another discussion about that if you'd like. Uh, the last page here is our report on internal control over financial reporting and on compliance. A lot of highlighting there. If you take a look at the last two highlighted items, you'll see that it says during our audit, we did not identify deficiencies that we consider to be material weaknesses. They may exist and have not been identified. And then the last item there, our test disclosed no instances of non-compliance that were required to share. So if we had issues that we noted during the audit, this letter is where we're required to communicate those to the board. Uh, we did not identify anything that required communication to the board for this year. We had another great year during the audit and, and we appreciate that. So that's my, uh, that's my quick run through of the financial statements. But if you have any questions now, I'm happy to answer those. If you have any questions you'd like to give our firm a call, please do. We're more than happy to talk with you about the financial statements and any questions you may have. 
Does anybody have any questions for Christina at this time? As always, fantastic job, Christina. We love when you come and you give us this report and that just speaks volumes to our staff. So Rachel and everybody that is involved in this from every aspect, um, so happy to see this type of report each, each time. Anybody have any questions for Christina? Go ahead and raise your hand if you do. All right. Christina, thank you so much for being here for this evening. We always appreciate it. And again, if anybody has any questions, you can follow up with her directly um, through her office um, or reach out to Rachel and Rachel can always forward a question uh, to her as well. Yep. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great new year. Thank you. You too. All right, moving along, we're going to move into our action items. It is quite a long list, so I will uh, start with the adoption of resolution for our 2021 meeting dates and times. Uh, I'm looking for a motion to put that forward. I did not see anything that jumped out of anything that we should have to make as a date change uh, for any holidays. Um, Tim. To adopt the resolution for the 2021 meeting dates and times. Smith. A uh, uh, question. Uh Yes. Uh, for you, Tammy uh, and Gru. Uh, in the NISA meeting, what we did is we also added in a caveat uh, with the executive order for at least considering Zoom or remote meetings. Um, should we do that or not do that? I don't know if that's a necessary thing. All right, I'll go ahead and um, move that over to Tim. Is it something that we would need to include in the language for this action item, Tim? It's an option that you have, but Essentially, you're required to comply with the Open Meetings Act. Right. And at this point, um, meetings in 2021 have to have a specific reason, but there is the potential for legislation to be adopted before the end of the year, which will allow a no reason type remote meeting similar to what we're doing tonight. So um, I think we'll just, can just leave it as is for right now. Okay. Okay. All right. Just a question. Thanks. Thank you very much. So we had a motion by Smith to move that resolution forward. Do I have support? Bellinger will support it. All right. Thank you so much. If there's no discussion, Barb, will you call the roll? Gilroy. Yes. Smith. Yes. Pratt. Yes. Bellinger. Yes. Weiss. Yes. Rhines. Yes. All right. Next, uh, we're going to move along to the first reading of the zoning ordinance amendments to revise Article 5 as to solar energy systems regulations, Article 7 as to buffer and screening requirements, and Article 8 as to sign regulations. And I want to thank planning for all of their hard work that they've uh, done uh, to get these moved forward so that we can uh, move them forward and, and have those updates. So I'm looking for a motion for that first reading. Um, I make a motion to approve a first reading of an ordinance to amend the City of Williamson zoning ordinance to revise Article 5 as to solar energy system regulations, Article 7 as to buffer and screening requirements, and Article 8 as to sign regulations. Rhines. Thank you. Second, Smith. Thank you. If there's no discussion on this, and this will come back again for the second reading at our January meeting, I will go ahead and ask Barb to call the roll for this. Smith. Yes. Pratt. Yes. Bellinger. Yes. Weiss. Yes. Rhines. Yes. Gilroy. Yes. Well, that took up a big chunk of the packet right off the top. <laughs> so next uh, for action item C, we have the 1492 East Grand River Avenue public utility easement. And Corey, you provided a memo for us. Yes, this is a follow-up item from a couple months ago. Council approved some work to the water system at this location. This is the Michigan Woodworking, formerly known as the Dummer Building. Um, as part of that work, it was contingent on the owners granting the city an easement uh, for a future water main loop on that end of town. I do want to point out that through the research process, uh, Scott DeVries, our city engineer, 
discovered that the existing water main uh, was not in a recorded easement that we could find. So this easement takes care of both the existing water main infrastructure and the proposed future water main infrastructure. Normally, when someone grants an easement, there's not a signature from the city. It's just from the property owner. Um, but because there is an obligation from for the city stemming from that earlier action, um, we are asking for the city's, um, I'm sorry, for the city council's approval. Yeah. All right. Does anybody have any questions for Scott? He is on uh, the call this evening. Scott, thanks so much for joining us. Um, does anybody have any questions for Scott? Uh, I do. This is Bellinger. Scott, this is just going to run down the west side of the building. Uh, there's a section of it that already exists south right. of the building, and then we're going to add mm -hmm. a little bit in there in the future to tie on to that and go over to the west. You're correct, and it goes okay. Up. Okay. okay, okay. That's what I needed to know. Thank you. Yep. All right. If there's no other questions, I'll ask for a motion to move this forward. Uh, Bellinger will make a motion to approve the permanent public utility easement agreement with 1492 EGR LLC for a public utility easement to the city of Williamston on the property at uh, 1492 East Grand River Avenue. Second. Thank you, Noah. Thank you, Dan. Uh, if there's no further discussion, I'll go ahead and ask Barb to call the roll for this. Smith. Yes. Pratt. Yes. Yeah. Bellinger. Yes. Weiss. Yes. Rhines. Yes. Gilroy. Yes. All right, next on our agenda is our council vacancy and you do have a memo in the packet from Holly. As we all know, we did, uh, we were um, five incumbents coming back. We had one incumbent, actually two incumbents that did not run. Tommy joined as a new candidate during the election. So we have one seat that will be open or that is open actually. And so uh, this allows us to uh, post the uh, open seat, uh, have applicants uh, drop off applications or submit them to city hall. Uh, and it looks like we've got a, a timeline here from Holly of vacancy until January 6th. Uh, with a review and interviews taking place on January 11th for a final decision um, and vote to be made uh, January 25th. Does anybody have any questions regarding what this open seat is or how uh, this works for a council vacancy? I have one question. What is the length of the term for this vacancy for whoever is appointed? It's a two-year term. A two-year term? Okay, so two-year term. Next election. Correct. So it would be the 2022 election cycle. Correct. Thank you, Holly. Yep. Thank you, Holly. If there are no further questions, I'm looking for a motion to move that forward with the requested action. I make a motion to direct the city clerk to accept applications to fill the city council vacancy until January 6, 2021, with review and interviews taking place at the January 11th, 2021 regular city council meeting and a final decision being made at the January 25th, 2021 council meeting. Thank you, Dan. Second, Smith. Thank you, Jean. Uh, Barb, will you call the roll on this, please? Grant. Yes. Bellinger. Yes. Weiss. Yes. Rhines. Yes. Gilroy. Yes. Smith. Yes. All right, moving next to action item E, we have the Williamston Area Senior Center Agreement. And this is um, regarding the 0.25 millage request uh, that was passed uh, during the November 3rd election. Uh, so I'm looking for a motion to move that forward, and then we can have discussion if anybody has questions for it. I'll make a motion to approve the enclosed agreement between the Williamston Area Senior Center and the City of Williamston for the provision of services to senior citizens in the City of Williamston-Smith. Thank you, Gene. Second, Pratt. 
Thank you, Tom. Does anybody have any questions or discussions uh, before I call for the roll? I have one question for Corey. Um, and it, I guess it's not quite it. We're in our agreement, we're requiring a, uh, a seat on the board. Do you know if any of the other municipalities that the millage passed in, are they, do they have similar requirements? Do you know? I am not aware, Dan. I do believe that we are probably at the forefront as far as getting an agreement together. Um, I know Rachel has had some discussion with some of her counterparts and there was some discussion that they would likely follow our lead in, in their agreement templates. Okay, thank you, Corey. Yeah, thank you, Corey. Um, that um, makes sense to have a seat at the table um, considering that um, this was uh, levied during the election. So um, we'll look forward to hearing, having feedback from the senior center on that. Uh, if there's no other discussion or questions regarding it, I'll ask Barb to call the roll. Bellinger. Yes. Weiss. Yes. Rines. Yes. Gilroy. Yes. Smith. Yes. Pratt. Yes. Great. Uh, item F on our action items is the 2020-2021 budget amendments. And we have a memo here from uh, Rachel. It looks like uh, we have two uh, general fund items increases. So I've got Rachel here. Does anybody have any questions for Rachel? All right, no questions for Rachel. I'll go ahead and ask for a motion. And then if there is discussion, um, we'll be able to do that after the motion and support has been put through. Uh, Bellinger, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the budget amendments for the general fund 101 as presented. Thank you, Noah. Second, wise. Thank you, Jeff. Any discussion regarding this? Okay. All right. I'll go ahead and ask Barb to call the roll, please. Weiss. Yes. Rines. Yes. Gilroy. Yes. Smith. Yes. Pratt. Yes. Bellinger. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rachel. Appreciate you being here this evening for that. Um, now we have item uh, G on the action items, and that is the 2021 cost of living wage increase. And Corey did provide a memo for this, so I will go ahead and turn it right over to Corey. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Uh, this evening, there's a request for council for a motion uh, to approve a cost of living adjustment of one and a half percent for all city employees. Over the years, you know, we have tried to provide a adjustment based on inflation increases. And so the 1.5% roughly tracks a slight percentage point or two above the current inflationary rate. The other thing that we've tried to do is we've tried to match uh, non-union and union wages. And with the recent uh, almost conclusion of the AFSCME contract, which calls for a 1.5% wage increase on January 1st, uh, that would put our non-union in line and as well as our CCLP, which is our police officers unit, uh, their current contract, which, ex which expires at the end of next year, includes what's called a Me Too clause, which means they receive whatever increase is provided for non-union employees. And so the way the motion is worded, it would impact all city employees um, because of those existing contract uh, provisions. Thank you very much, Corey. Any questions for Corey before I ask for that uh, motion and support? All right, I'm looking for a motion to move this forward. Make a motion to approve the cost of living adjustment of 1.5% for all city employees effective January 1st, 2021. Smith. Thank you, Jean. Second, wise. Thank you, Jeff. If there's no discussion or other questions, or any questions actually, um, I'll go ahead and ask Barb to call the roll for this. And thank you very much, Corey, for putting that together. Rines. Yes. Gilroy. Yes. Smith. Yes. Pratt. Yes. Bellinger. 
Yes. Weiss. Yes. All right. Uh, item H on our action item list is the Michigan Site Readiness Grant application. Again, there is a memo from Corey, so I'm going to go ahead and let him continue on uh, and give us information on this. All right. Thank you, Mayor. This is the first of two grant applications that we're requesting consideration of. Uh, the background on this one is the organization LEAP, which um, is an economic development organization that's been helping the city uh, with its economic development efforts, uh, had approached us last summer about joining with several Ingham County communities to apply for what's called a Michigan Site Readiness Grant through the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. The, the grant has to apply to a specific site or area that is listed for sale for industrial purposes. In the city, that is essentially only um, our industrial park, the site that's owned by Granger uh, Construction Company. And so what, what we worked at and looked at was what kind of application could we do that would help us with making those sites more site ready. Uh, and the definition of that is provided in the packet. And so what we settled on was um, dealing with the sewer capacity that exists in the force main and the lift station near Lynn Road, which serves uh, us, the southern end of town. And so we were trying to find a project that we could indicate had an impact in the industrial park but would also help us with some of the uncertainties that exist over development on the parcels by I-96. So we put that proposal together uh, and went with that application and found out that, you know, our Ingham County combined application was not accepted. However, there was a separate pot of money that the MEDC is looking at providing this group of communities and it has been strongly implied that we are in line for funding. Um, it's a community development block grant that they have somehow applied to this program uh, that their original program did not have enough money to fund. And so in order to move forward, they are looking for a what's called a financial commitment letter uh, for the match, which we've proposed a $7,500 match out of our sewer fund. Uh, we did have some sense that this could happen, and so that is included in our budget this year. Uh, but in order to uh, formally do that, we do seek a council motion to approve that match. Um, if successful, the total project is about $43,000. And so that would be a $35,500 benefit um, in grant funds that can help study the sewer capacity issue on the south end of town and potentially provide us with um, an engineered plan that could be used to actually execute with either a developer or a future round of site readiness funding um, down the road. But we, we can't get there without a sense of what the project actually is. And so I, I do want to just note that Scott's here and, and knows much more about the inner workings of the project if there's specific questions. Um, and I do want to acknowledge LEAP's efforts uh, in trying to bring money to the region. They were successful last year in 2019. And I, I told myself, I'm not gonna let that application go by without us applying for something uh, in 2020. And that is what we are trying to do. Great, thank you, Corey. And, and thanks so much for staying on top of that because grant dollars are very few and far to come by. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, offer this up for Scott to give us a little um, bit of, of where he's coming from and what this will do to help us because I know you've been working on your master plan and everything you probably and we got the big book um, so Scott what else can you add um, to this and for us well the you referenced the big book that was on the water part of the system this in particular is focusing on the sanitary sewer side mm -hmm. of the system um, there is an existing sewer model that was put together part of our saw grant activity by C2AE. Um, there is also a previous study that was done back around 2005 or 2006, and it identified that the in order for us, the city, to be able to uh, develop in the southern part of the system, flow has to be diverted to another part of the system on Putnam Street. 
and the in particular the lift station on Lynn Road. Um, with the updates that we've been doing with our future service areas, it is uh, important for us to take that information, plug that into this. There, you also need to do some um, uh, flow monitoring in the system. So part of the cost, why it's so expensive, is that we need to do proper flow monitoring. During the SAW grant, there was not enough time to capture big rain events and big infiltration events um, into the model. And so what we've done is provided some adequate money to do it for a long enough time period to get those events and get the model calibrated properly. So this is very necessary, I believe. Uh, the city does have a history of having to turn away potential development near I-96 because of this whole sewer issue and the ability of the system to be able to take what the development was going to do. So we feel that this is very well spent money. Great, thank you, Scott. Does anybody have any questions for Scott or Corey regarding this? Just a quick statement for Corey, the fact that you guys are so well planned and budgeted for this and you know, it's not a surprise to us. It was an expected expense uh, just altogether extremely uh, impressive. So thank you. I'm looking for a motion then to move this forward. With that, I'll make a motion to approve the submission of a financial commitment letter offering a $7,500 local match from the sewer fund for a site readiness grant application. Smith. Thank you, Gene. Bellinger, support. Thank you, Noah. If there's no further discussion, I'll go ahead and have Barb call the roll. Gilroy. Yes. Smith. Yes. Pratt. Yes. Bellinger. Yes. Weiss. Yes. Rhines. Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, Item I on our action list is the Drinking Water Assessment Management DWAM grant application. Corey, I'll go ahead and turn that over to you um, for this uh, memo that you've included. All right, thank you, Mayor. Uh, another grant opportunity this side on the water side. I just wanna point out that there was a program announced by the governor a couple months ago called the Michigan Clean Water Program. The only piece of it that's been funded is on the water side. And so there's potentially going to be legislation that will fund mil multi millions of dollars on the wastewater side that we are hoping will happen and will allow us a path for some of the uh, wastewater treatment plant things that are going to come out of the, the master plan. But for now, uh, this is the first grant program that's been completely announced with an application. And similar to the last grant, we are jumping right on it to try to take advantage. And so this is primarily focused on uh, the lead rule that came out as a result of everything that happened in Flint, Michigan. Um, the city has been undergoing the process to confirm uh, lead service lines or basically the, the service line material. And we've, we've completed a fair amount of those just in the last couple months. Uh, this grant application would pay for the city's work to do that. Um, that is an unfunded mandate. There's no state dollars that are coming to our water fund outside of this grant program to help us with that. And so what we did in preparing this application is really shot for the stars. You know, we're saying to complete our entire program, including inside, outside, um, as well as some asset management work that we can tie into that. Uh, we've come up with a total application that is over $176,000. Uh, there is no match required for a, our water fund. And so the complete details are included in the packet in the narrative that uh, Scott and I have been working on. Um, we feel very confident in our plan. We feel very strongly that our cost per service line uh, is likely far cheaper than what a contractor or consultant could do uh, by doing this work in-house. We're basically asking the state to you know, reimburse us for those costs. And so uh, while a motion or a resolution was not required, just given the magnitude of the project and what we're talking about, uh, we wanted to make sure there was council support. If council approves tonight, our intent is to apply in the next week. 
We understand that the state will provide some preliminary feedback um, prior to that January 1st submittal deadline. And so we wanna get in as, as soon as we can uh, so that our application has the chance to get digested by the state staff. Um, after that, we will find out sometime before March 15th if we're successful. And in a webinar, the state did indicate that there's a chance that the funding could be exhausted in the first round. And so we are eager to try to apply and, and at least get our name on the list for this first round. Great work, Corey and Scott. Um, again, and I'm gonna echo what Jean said too, looking for those pots of money that we can make and submit applications for is huge. So great work on this. Um, does anybody have any questions regarding this before I ask for that motion? All right, I'm looking for a motion to move this forward. I'll make a motion to approve submission of financial commitment letter offering 7,500 local match from the sewer fund for a state readiness grant application. Nope, Jeff, we're on the next one. Drinking water, oh, asset management. Then go ahead, Farno. I make a motion to approve <laughs> submission of a drinking water asset management grant application to the Michigan Department of Envir Environmental Great Lakes and Energy and to authorize the city manager and city engineer to sign documents related to the grant applications. Thank you, Dan. Do I have support? Support. Also support, I found it. All right, thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Noah, both of you. If there's no further questions, I'll go ahead and have Barb call the roll call. Smith. Smith? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Pratt. Okay. Yes. Bellinger. Yes, and good job, Scott and Corey. Weiss. Yes. Rhines. Yes. Gilroy. Yes. All right. Uh, item J, revised planning services agreement. Uh, Corey, I want to thank you so much. This has been a very long time coming. Um, we've been trying to work on something like this for years uh, where we can bring things in-house, and I think you've done an excellent job. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and move this right over to you uh, so that you can kind of fill us in. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, Tammy is right. So this is this is really, I think, one of the last steps in the gradual unwinding of uh, previous relationships with AGS and McKenna. And um, when we set out to hire a part-time zoning administrator a few months ago, wasn't really sure what we'd find. Um, we had a, a pretty uh, solid finalist pool um, and we've offered a position to a gentleman uh, who brings a master's in city and regional planning. Um, he's not been a day-to-day -day zoning administrator um, but I think in time with some of his background in housing and community development that that he will be a solid addition for us. Um, I, I laid out back in that memo and I excerpted it in the memo tonight that, you know, I always anticipated that there would be some need for outside assistance uh, when the day come that we had an in-house zoning administrator. And so what this agreement does is it, it keeps our relationship with McKenna, but on an as needed basis on an hourly or project based uh, rate structure. And the intent of when we set out here was that our budget for the McKenna contract AGS, that our position would come in about eight to $10,000 under that to leave a buffer. Um, but then we've also got this component where if we have those complex applications, there would be um, basically a fee passed on to the applicants for that extra uh, technical expertise that could be needed. And so tonight we're just asking uh, for a motion to, to approve this revised agreement that would have us have the ability for us to utilize McKenna services at, at an established rate structure uh, for the foreseeable immediate future. And I think in time, as we work with our new zoning administrator, you know, that will really tell us what we need. And a lot of it will be driven by, you know, the types of development applications that we get. Um, if we experience, you know, just a wave of development, um, and special land uses and, and plan unit developments like that, we could result in us needing some outside assistance. Uh, the last thing I'll say is that uh, when attorney Perone reviewed this agreement, 
He did note a couple of changes. He may want to highlight those, mostly uh, minor typographical type things that were not changed by the time the packet went out. Okay. Uh, Tim, I'll go ahead and uh, ask you to um, just highlight those for us so that we know before we uh, call for the motion. Some of them are, are quite minor, um, where there's a uh, reference to a, a one half. They use the numeral two instead of one half, and that's in seven B two. Um, there's also just some just some typos for. Uh, where a letter is there instead of a hyphen. And then there's some erroneous cross references in uh, section 7B as well. Uh, they mentioned section C and there isn't one. And then uh, in section 7B9, uh, it's all over the place with regard to the length of an expedited review. They talk about five days, but then in parent parentheses, they say three days and 72 hours. And yet, when they talk about the response, they mention 120 hours. Okay. So I've asked Corey to just get some of those uh, typos and discrepancies cleared up. And so your motion should probably just indicate that, yes, this will be a revised agreement, revised from the current version that we have with uh, McKenna. Uh, but with uh, any uh, corrections made to the satisfaction of the city attorney, all right, great. Thank you very much. Um, Corey, right off the top, I just wanted to um, ask, and if you don't have a number, that's great, but um, we're moving from this uh, contract with McKenna where we were uh, we had them on retainer. Now we're bringing in um, our 20-hour person. What type of cost savings are we going to be seeing? Um, okay, so I think I can address that. So the, the memo provided that our base fees between AGS and McKenna, that's our, that was our retainer basis with AGS, mm -hmm. uh, approximately 35,000 budgeted. Oh. And I said at $20 an hour for 20 hours a week, our annual outlay, including payroll taxes for the part-time position would be about $22,391. And, and then, you know, they will have to use their own vehicle that if there's code enforcement issues. And so I estimated an IRS reimbursement and so with all of that, there, there should be a buffer of about $10,000 between what we currently pay and what we're anticipating to pay for our new part-time zoning administrator. Um, keeping in mind that, um, you know, the $35,000 budget, you know, was also less days in the office, right? So, right. you know, the idea is that we're not getting quite the same level of maybe, you know, the full blown company that McKenna provides um, with all the resources that they have, but we're getting that day-to-day -day person that is gonna be here and provide that service at a, a smaller hourly rate uh, than what you'd pay a private firm. Right, and I think that's where we really were um, wanting to improve for our residents in our community was having somebody that's dedicated to Williamson, that Williamson is always their their priority, whereas with McKenna, when you have them in the office at reduced um, days, and then they bounce around from other municipalities, sometimes I think they always have to hit the restart button um, when it comes to um, what's a priority for us, um, for Williamston. Um, great work on this. I do think we are, you know, we've wanted to move in this direction for a very long time. Um, I'm excited about having the new part-time person come in. Does anybody have any questions for Corey regarding this before I ask for that motion? All right, I'm looking for a motion to move this forward then. I make a motion to approve the revised agreement between the city of Williamston and McKenna Associates Inc. for as needed professional and technical planning advisory services. Second. Correct. And that's gonna be with those additional corrections that Tim had pointed out. Yes, with, with corrections as, as pointed out by council. Thank you. And did we have a support on that? Correct. 
Thank you very much, Tom. Uh, if there's no further discussion, I'll ask Barb to call the roll on this. No. Yes. Grant. Yes. Bellinger. Yes. Weiss. Yes. Rhines. Yes. Gilroy. Yes. All right, we are to our last action item of the evening, which is item K, and that's the Ingham County Designated Assessor Resolution. Uh, we have a memo in here from Corey, um, and it's got a, a lot of information in here and what's going on, uh, the person's uh, resume, um, what this covers. Corey, is there anything in addition that you want to add to it? I will just note, uh, and I think the memo says it, that this is... Uh, it's a requirement passed on from the state to the county. The county needs at least 50% of the jurisdictions to, to to authorize the agreement. And so we're bringing it forward. They're trying to get it done by the end of this month. Um, this is uh, basically a requirement that will likely not be triggered in our town unless we have a lot of issues with our audit from the state on our assessing practices. Hey, does anybody have any questions regarding uh, what Corey has shared with us? All right, I'm going to ask for a motion to move this forward. A motion to approve a resolution to authorize the approval and signing of an interlocal agreement for the Ingham County designated assessor, Smith. Bellinger, Thank you, Jean. Bellinger support. Thank you, Noah. Uh, if there's no further discussion, I'll go ahead and ask Barb to call the roll for this last agenda action item. Grant. Yes. Bellinger. Yes. Weiss. Yes. Rhines. Yes. Gilroy. Yes. Smith. Yes. All right, that concludes our action items for this evening. Uh, moving along the agenda, we do not have any discussion items. We did not receive any correspondence. So I'll move right into department head reports. We've got a memo from Corey uh, with a couple bullet points on here. Thank you so much, Corey. Does anybody have any questions for Corey uh, regarding his report or Corey, is there anything that you would like to add? I, I just want to note, uh, this is our last meeting of the year, and I just want to thank council for you know, the support this year. This has been a very odd year. We've made a lot of, frankly, bizarre decisions going back to March about services and operations. Um, and, you know, it, it would have made it a lot more difficult if council wasn't supportive and, and having our backs. And uh, we've been trying to do the right thing the whole time this whole period. So I'm hopeful that, you know, we're around in the corner and that there's some normalcy coming in the new year. Uh, I'm not trying to get too optimistic or anything, but I just, you, you guys said some nice things during the audit and all that. So I just want to acknowledge, you know, council support and uh, really acknowledge our staff and the work that they've done this year through a pandemic and COVID. Um, everybody has continued to operate at their normal high level. And uh, even though it's been sometimes in different environments and uh, different circumstances. So I know it's been a long meeting. I just wanted to acknowledge that and uh, thank everybody for getting through this year with us. All right. Thank you, Corey. Does anybody have any questions for Corey regarding his memo? Uh, just Corey, real quickly, when the new staff starts for the uh, planning, uh, if he could come to a meeting and introduce himself. It'd be nice to get to meet him. So absolutely. Just at some point. Yep. And con congratulations on all the hard work you guys are doing. So. All right. Uh, we have chief with us, chief. Yes, I do. I have one quick item. Uh, last city council meeting. I was very pleased to announce we were fully staffed with a new hire of Dane Bond. This council meeting, um, our most senior Officer John P. Long, 18 years of service, has requested a, a deferred retirement. And so as of um, February, we won't be fully staffed. But uh, please for John, he's asked to stay on as a reserve officer, but he's going on in a career of realty. 
Yeah. All right. Well, we definitely want to wish uh, Officer P. Long uh, well wishes um, for his uh, service to the city. And, and I'm sure that we'll uh, be able to do that in the in the upcoming months as well. Um, but, yep, you cross one hurdle and, and then you have another one to cross, Chief. So just it's going to keep you on your toes uh, while you're still here. Um, so thank you for that. Appreciate it. Um, we also, uh, for the first time, have received our um, first report from, I think, Corey, correct me if I'm wrong, Livingston County uh, Department of Building and, Eng and Safety Engineering. This is our first report that we've received for them and um, very thorough. I really like the looks of this and it's very detailed, which is nice. And it's a lot of activity. Um, does anybody have any questions regarding um, the uh, report that we received from Livingston County that Corey might be able to answer? All right, I will go ahead and uh, ask for anybody that's had a committee or subcommittee report. Is there anything that anybody would like to share? I can tell you from the DDA standpoint, um, they're working on the um, Williamston commercial, uh, the holiday commercial, and actually kind of making that a little bit um, more, uh, I think, uh, something that can be used over the course of the year, um, just with the, the video and everything that they're putting together. Um, it's had, um, it's, it's coming along. I don't think it's quite finished. Um, right, Corey? We're not ready for it yet. Um, but it is being worked on and, and they're doing um, uh, good work on that. Um, nothing really else to share from DDA. Um, but does anybody have anything that they want to share from their uh, committee meetings? Uh, just a general question for you, Mayor. Uh, I did yes. attend the uh, uh, NISA meeting uh, this last week, but uh, are the assignments going forward pretty much going to say the same? Or are we going to reassert new assignments for different boards as we move to the new year? Um, I think um, my gut feeling is um, we will stay the same unless I have a council member come um, and ask me a different assignment or removal or I mean I, I pretty much think everybody is good with their assignments okay and 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 again um please reach out um I know that we'll um be putting Tom on a board I've got to have Holly send that to me and then of course we've got the open seat so um as it stands right now I won't be making any changes uh, the only request I would have is that since I'm still working full time, getting to the cemetery board meeting is very, very difficult. So that's okay. maybe something that Tom might want to be <laughs> looked at. Or all, all right, I will. I will make a note about that one. Thank you, Noah. Okay. I, I will interject there real quick. I think that's a general issue that a lot of people would have with the cemetery board meetings, and I, I don't know if we would want to just address that through proper channels or over the town to pointing out that it is <laughs> difficult to meet to to have a midday meeting right for, for most maybe we can offer that up and 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 request a, a friendly time change that would be for, helpful, um for the for this calendar year just a thought so all right thank you yeah. noah thank you for the consideration Anybody else with anything? Like I mentioned earlier, Planning Commission Planning Commission has been working um, on those ordinance uh, changes, zoning ordinance amendments. Um, they've been working really hard. I know that um, not all of the boards, because of this year, they haven't had a lot um, to do. But if anybody has anything they want to share, it, the floor is still open. All right, um, Holly, did we have anybody join for audience participation while we were um, on? Uh, just John, John Bradley. Okay, hi, John, how are you? You know, yes, just listening in, making sure I keep a pulse. All Make right. everyone's, everyone's self safe and happy. <laughs> All right, well, thanks so much for joining us this evening. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to council member comments, and I will start with uh, Dan Rines. Um, I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you to Corey and all the city staff for the great job they've done this year in an un unprecedented uh, situation with just a lot of, lot of changes happening constantly, and I think uh, city staff's just knocked it out of the park with uh with the way they've handled this year and everything that's been thrown out at them and just offer them a big thank you 
Thank you. Uh, Noah, moving over to you. Uh, ditto, same thing, but I also want to welcome Tom Pratt to the board. Uh, it's been a while. I don't know if he remembers me from Boy Scouts, but <laughs> that goes back a ways. So uh, again, welcome to the team. That's it. Thank you. Me. All right, Tom, we'll just jump right to you. Okay. Well, I don't have a, a lot of <laughs> to talk about from the year since it's my first meeting, but I appreciate everybody welcoming me and I'm excited to, to work with you guys. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, Gene. Well, uh, definitely echoing uh, Dan's comments there. I mean, what what a challenging and incredible year and, and yet every challenge has been met, even including the election. I mean, my gosh, that's there's just so, so much that's been on, on your plates that above and beyond what a normal year would look like. Um, uh, but to that end, a uh, particular praise, uh, my observation of the, the Lampston Police Department this year, we've got a team there that has performed ab above anything I've ever seen before. Um, I, some of the things that these guys are coming across and uh, hunting down and getting off our streets. Uh, I mean, it's it's absolutely stunning that our beautiful Wamston um, stays as nice as it, it as it is with this kind of stuff coming through, and yet it's it's these guys out there putting their lives on the line and uh, shielding us from that. And uh, it's just been incredible uh, to watch. And they're hungry, and they love this city, and they love the people. Um, that live here. And so uh, just particular praise to the police department for just even again through COVID and all of that. Um, they, they've been out there right along. And so I just incredibly just beaming with pride uh, at watching those guys. Thank you, Gene. Jeff, you're up. All right. I think we got a thumbs up from Jeff. Uh, I, I have to say, um, number one, I like Jeff's background, best of all, because that was pretty cool uh, with the City Hall uh, springtime flowers behind him. I want to say thank you to our entire staff, um, all of our council members, our boards, um, every single group that has navigated through this year. And we're doing it in our daily lives with our, our you know day jobs. But um, I can't say enough about how um, this community, our every from from businesses downtown to our our city staff, DPW, uh, WPD, has made it through this year, um, which is something I don't think anybody could have ever anticipated. And so my hats off to all of you for keeping this running smoothly. In fact, we almost have a full city staff on here this evening because um, we've got Holly, Barb, and Rachel. We're missing Anne. Uh, so that would have been really neat, but I just can't say enough about uh, what everybody has done. Thank you very much uh, to my fellow council members for your continued support uh, for this next um, year. And uh, hopefully we'll get back to a little bit more normal. And um, But we'll just keep moving on the way we've been keep moving on because I think we've done uh, a good job of it uh, thus far. So that's it for my council. Uh, member uh, comments, except for, you know, happy holidays to everybody. This is definitely different, um, you know, with how we spend time with family and friends and, and the decisions we need to make and, and everything. So I just want to wish you all um, very happy holidays as we move through the month of December and into January, because this is our last meeting uh, for the year. Um, but with that, I'm going to go ahead and ask for us, um, I'm going to ask to uh, close uh, this and, and move into closed session for a strategy discussion regarding collective bargaining as permitted by MCL 15.268C at 8.03. Do you need a motion? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, well, I know that we have to have a motion, you guys. Come back. Uh oh. I'll uh, make a motion. Oh. I'm still here. <laughs> okay, great. To, Thanks. To, Holly, are you able to tell them the to come back in for that? Stopped. Oh, no. Holly's the host now. God. All right. Well, uh, thanks, Jeff, Tim, for making we, that motion. Tim, what do we do? Do, do we do a stub of a quorum? <laughs> you need nope. to have a quorum, make a motion, and a two thirds vote to go into closed session. 
Barb, can you get Holly? Oh, here's, uh, let's see, Noah's back. Everybody's coming back. All right, so we have to have that motion to move into closed session before we uh, hit that join button for breakout rooms. So can uh, we have a motion uh, from Councilman Weiss to move into closed session? Do I have a support? Yeah. Support. From Thank you, Noah. Uh, Barb, will you call the roll, please? Yes. <coughs> Rines. Yes. Gilroy. Yes. Smith. Yes. Pratt. Yes. Bellinger. Yes. Weiss. Yes. All right, we can all go to breakout room one now. Thank you. Uh, you got to show the breakout room again for us so that we can click on it. <laughs> all right, I'd this like to go. Meeting is being recorded. I'd like to go ahead and go uh, make a motion to go back into open uh, session at eight eleven. Second voice. Thank you. You already did that. Maybe. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Holly. Just want to make sure that we're staying on track. Um, so. Um, Matt, we have you here, and if you could go ahead and uh, give us that uh, language again, I would appreciate it. Yes, the suggested motion is to ratify the agreement reached with the AFSCME DPW unit dated December 7, 2020, and authorize the mayor to sign the collective bargaining agreement upon approval by legal counsel. Thank you. Make a motion, uh, the same language from counsel. Thank you very much, Mr. Weiss. Smith. Thank you much, Mr. Smith. Uh, can I go ahead and have a roll call on that, please? Gilroy. Yes. Smith. Yes. Pratt. Yes. Bellinger. Yes. Weiss. Yes. Rines. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. I want to wish you all a very happy holidays, a very safe uh, new year as we go into 2021. This is our last meeting uh, for council for the year 2020. I think we've uh, all ought to give ourselves a, a nice little hand for getting through this year, everything, all of our challenges that we've faced. I can't uh, thank you all enough. Um, one last note, uh, as we move through December into January, and I'm sure some uh, winter weather will come, just remember no parking on the streets between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. So our DPW crew can get out there and do what they do best, move snow when we need it moved. Thank you so much, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and call to adjourn our meeting at 813. Great job. The recording has Thank stopped. you. Thank you, everybody.